Queen Helen of Sparta and the Trojan Prince Paris docked on the island of Crenae, near the coast of Peloponnese. They were drunk with passion instilled by Eros, and wished to materialize that feeling. Paris and Helen had their first night of love on the beaches of Crenae. Meanwhile, the other Trojans were having fun with the treasures stolen from Menelaus. But the news quickly reached Crete, where Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon were still mourning the body of their grandfather. Menelaus felt an enormous fury and thirst for revenge. Agamemnon tried to calm his brother and assured him that he would do everything possible to enforce the oath that the Greek nobles took when Helen chose Menelaus as her husband. In the glorious city of Mycenae, Greece, dozens of warlords entered through the legendary Lion Gate and made themselves available to fulfill the oath. Before Agamemnon and Menelaus, they made their warriors available. These nobles had various motives. Some were motivated by honor, others seeked to profit from the plunder of the rich city of Troy, and others, above all, desired glory. A gigantic army was formed with the goal of rescuing the Spartan queen. But the wise Nestor was an old king who had already participated in the most varied missions. He knew that they couldn't leave for Troy without recruiting the cunning King Odysseus of Ithaca. The small island of Ithaca was not very wealthy, and its few soldiers were not renowned. But its king was known to be clever, an attribute that could make a huge difference during the Greek campaign against Troy. Odysseus led a full life with his beautiful wife Penelope, with whom he had a son named Telemachus. When Odysseus heard that the Greek kings had gathered to fight Troy, he knew that someone would soon summon him. The king of Ithaca had no desire to leave his kingdom and family to take part in an uncertain adventure. So he decided to visit the oracle. If he were told that the war would be short and that he would return safe and sound, he would participate in the mission. But if the prophecy said otherwise, Odysseus would find a way to slip away. Halitherses, the old soothsayer, prophesied, if Odysseus left for Troy, he would not return until 20 years later. During that period, he would lose all his men and no one would recognize him. Faced with this omen, Odysseus decided to do everything possible to prevent his going to Troy. Odysseus pretended to be mad. The news that the king of Ithaca had gone crazy spread throughout Hellas. The news reached the kings who were gathered around Agamemnon, saddening them. But Palamedes, the king of Euboea, who was almost as intelligent as Odysseus, was suspicious. Palamedes, Melanaeus, and Agamemnon left for Ithaca to check on Odysseus' situation. They were greeted upon arrival by the beautiful Penelope, with her son Telemachus on her lap. She seemed saddened by her husband's situation. Odysseus worked the land with a plow pulled by an ox and a donkey, an unusual combination. In addition, he sowed the land with salt. Menelaus and Agamemnon found that Odysseus had lost his lucidity. But Palamedes, despite that grotesque scene, was not convinced. He took the hero's son from his mother's arms and placed him in front of the path Odysseus was walking with the plow. The king of Ithaca stopped the animals abruptly so as not to run over his son, proving that his madness was just a trick. Odysseus glared furiously at Palamedes as he returned his son to his mother's arms. Odysseus asked his countrymen to forget that episode, for their future was Troy. He vowed that he would fight the Trojans with unparalleled courage, together with the two sons of Atreus. Odysseus left for war, leaving behind his beloved wife and little son. 
Odysseus would never forgive Palamedes for having unmasked him. As soon as there was an opportunity, he would take revenge on the king of Euboea for putting his son at risk and driving the patriarch away from his family. Meanwhile, Odysseus was given his first mission, to find the whereabouts of Peleus's famous son, named Achilles. <laughs>